And welcome to CBN News Watch. It is Monday, August 23rd, 2021. Coming up, Tropical Storm Henri hits the Northeast, causing some damage, and Tennessee deals with devastating floodwaters. We'll bring you the latest. Plus, we're asking the question is there a secret weapon to fight against the coronavirus? This is a dramatic treatment for those that have COVID early on, not for the people that are hospitalized, but for the people that have early diagnosis. Dr. Chauncey Crandall tells us about this treatment in an exclusive report. And it's a tiny country, but it's become a hot spot for refugees because of a dictator weaponizing migrants. I don't know how long time I stay here. We are not animals. We are human, brother. We are human. It's no matter the Lukashenko, they have problem. He's, not, he's okay, he's not okay. We'll explore why the dictator is targeting migrants and how this could affect Lithuania. All this and more coming up This next. is CBN News Watch. And we begin this half hour with the severe weather affecting the northeast. Tropical Storm Henri made landfall on the coast of Rhode Island Sunday afternoon. The storm had sustained winds of 60 miles an hour and gusts of up to 70 miles. During the height of the storm, more than 100,000 power outages were reported. It's rain ban spreading over nine states, putting 40 million people on a flash flood watch. My backyard actually turned into a um, lake. Uh, it was a normal backyard, but um, as you can see, um, you could probably put your kayak in here and kayak through it. Henri is now in tropical depression and is expected to move inland today, which could bring the worst damage. Meanwhile, in Tennessee, historic flooding leaves at least 21 people dead. Torrential rain caused a creek to overflow its banks, destroying entire neighborhoods. Houses are washed away, knocked off foundations, um, just totally gone. Uh, still people missing. Um, uh, lots of cars are smashed up and gone. The flooding started about 75 miles southwest of Nashville in the small city of Waverly. 17 inches of rain fell in less than 24 hours, which sent floodwaters through communities along the Tennessee River. Today in Afghanistan, a firefight between the Taliban and coalition forces at Kabul airport, killing an Afghan officer and wounding three. Evacuations out of Afghanistan are reportedly speeding up as President Joe Biden defends the U.S. chaotic withdrawal. Dil Hurd is on the story. The incident comes amid credible threats that ISIS in Afghanistan is plotting attacks around the airport. The U.S. State Department is warning Americans not to try to get to the airport. U.S. military aircraft fire flares during takeoff, hoping to confuse possible heat-seeking missiles from the Taliban who surround the airport. Joe Biden insists he made the right decision and said the withdrawal would be messy no matter how it happened. I think that history is going to record this was the logical, rational, and right decision to make. But he's taking fire for not getting Americans out before withdrawing troops. U.S. citizen David Fox is stuck in Kabul with his wife and child, turned away after reaching the airport. The airport is very dangerous. So the Taliban enforcers have these, you know, big rubber bands. I think they're called like motor fan belts. I actually got whacked with... Um, you know, with one of these, like, you know, fan belts for not moving fast enough. Desperate Afghans are taking desperate measures. This infant was handed to American troops over razor wire. The boy has been reunited with his father at the airport. This young girl was begging to be let in. I got a hand for me! <laughs> Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris on her trip to South Asia, laughing as a reporter shouts questions about the debacle in Afghanistan. What's your response to reports of Americans? Oh, hold on, hold on. Slow down, everybody. <laughs> Republican leaders are calling out the administration for the catastrophe at the airport and a new and growing threat to the U.S. And this is an embarrassment on the world stage that Joe Biden has provided us. This has set us back decades. The Taliban now has more Black Hawk helicopters than Australia. Our mission in Afghanistan was to deny terrorists a sanctuary. And the Biden decision now to completely withdraw has handed them an entire country. Joe Biden now says the August 31st deadline to withdraw U.S. troops and evacuate civilians could be extended. 
but there's word the Taliban will not agree to it. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Evangelist Franklin Graham's son, Edward Graham, from Samaritan's Purse, spoke to CBN News and shared some of his views on the fallout in Afghanistan. This is a man-made mess um, on both sides with the Taliban, with evil, with failed policies here on multiple administrations here in the U.S. But in order to get out of this and to get everyone out, to get uh, our partners out, uh, the, the church, uh, NGOs, we're going to need a miracle. Mm. And uh, man made this, but it's going to take God to get us out. And that's my prayer. I was like, Lord, please. I go to bed at night praying for uh, a way to get these people out. They're hurting. They're scared. I mean, they know what's coming with the Taliban. They know exactly what's coming. And that's why they're fleeing. They either lived it or they know the stories. Wow. And uh, it's, it's my prayer for peace, a peace that only God can bring about, not man. Clearly, man could not bring peace in Afghanistan. Only God can. And that's what I'm praying for. I want to turn now to the latest developments with the pandemic. The FDA could give full approval of the Pfizer vaccine as Pfizer vaccine as early as today. Some believe this could help to convince more Americans to become vaccinated. The U.S. Surgeon General says the approval can help get things moving forward. For businesses and universities that have been thinking about putting vaccine requirements in place in order to create safer spaces for people to work and learn, I think that this move from the FDA when it comes will actually help them uh, to move forward. Right now, the daily COVID cases stand an average about 137,000, up 237 percent in the last month. Turning now to an exclusive report on COVID-19, America is at war with an ever-changing target, the coronavirus and its multiple mutations. But there is a secret weapon that could mean the difference between life and death for you and your loved ones. So exactly what is it? And why is it essential to get this little known treatment as early as possible? CBN News medical reporter Lori Johnson spoke with Dr. Chauncey Crandall, who explains this new treatment. President Biden announced all adults will need booster shots eight months after becoming fully vaccinated because of data showing a decrease in their effectiveness. Illustrating we're in a war against an ever changing enemy. It's mutating, it's mutating, it's mutating. And it's really, you know, your your audience are Christians. This is really like the devil himself. He is going after everyone and he wants to kill and destroy everyone in his past. Florida cardiologist Chauncey Crandall says people should try to avoid becoming infected, but should know what to do if that happens. The best thing is really always to stay strong and healthy. You know, there's always a debate about the vaccine. If you get the vaccine, I think you have some advantage. But those that are unvaccinated, and many Christians are unvaccinated, uh, you need to take precautions. And, and if you do uh, appear that you have symptoms, you need to get tested and you need to get tested early on. Don't wait. That's because of a little known treatment called Regeneron. This is a dramatic treatment for those that have COVID early on, not for the people that are hospitalized, but for the people that have early diagnosis. Regeneron was given to President Trump after he became infected with COVID last year. The FDA granted emergency use authorization in November. The synthetic antibody begins fighting the virus soon after entering the body. Regeneron is the thing that we must use today to fight the battle, and it is a winning tool. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis set up Regeneron infusion sites across the state. You go there, you will get an IV, they will infuse this for an hour, and then you'll be under observation for an hour. And if you do well, you go home. Can you take Regeneron prophylactically? In other words, can you take it instead of a vaccine? Well, it sometimes it is approved uh, for families. Those are also candidates to receive Regeneron therapy as a protective measure. And uh, we know that this therapy, which is a monoclonal antibody, will prevent them from getting infection in a household that is already infected. Dr. Crandall says if more people used Regeneron, perhaps hospitals wouldn't be so overwhelmed. Do you know that the families aren't even allowed in these hospitals? Ministers and churches aren't allowed in and they're not going in. But I don't see the church outside. 
So I'm calling on the people of God to pray this Friday and Saturday night for all those that are in the hospitals that are sick and dying right now. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett heads to Washington this week for his first visit with President Joe Biden. And as CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl reports, there's one glaring issue on the agenda, Iran. Prime Minister Bennett says Iran is acting like a bully in the region and he wants the U.S. to get tough. I will tell President Biden that now is the time to halt the Iranians, to stop this thing, not to give them a rescue line in the form of re-entering a nuclear deal that has already expired and is not relevant, even to those who thought it was once relevant. Biden wants to re-enter the Iranian nuclear deal, but the talk stalled recently. Since then, Iran has a new hardline president and is rapidly advancing its uranium enrichment, far beyond what was allowed in the original deal, the JCPOA. Israel says it's only a matter of weeks before Iran will have what it needs to make a nuclear bomb. Bennett says he has a plan for Biden. We will present an organized plan that we have built in the past two months to stop the Iranians in the nuclear dimension and in regards to its regional aggression. Former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren says one of the ways to stop Iran is by hitting its economy. Striking at its oil industry would hurt Iran. It doesn't have to involve civilian casualties, um, but you would, Israel could deal a very severe blow uh, to the Iranian economy. Oren tells CBN News this meeting between Bennett and Biden is crucial for Israel. Israel has to make clear to the United States, A, that it will never be bound by the Iran nuclear deal, that we'll never give up our freedom of action. He says Israel also needs to hear how the U.S. plans to enhance Israel's security should it re-enter the JCPOA. Because our security would be greatly impaired by the renewal of that agreement. And there are various ways by uh, improving Israel's capabilities, by various understandings with the United States, in which our security can be improved, albeit not 100 percent, because the JCPOA poses a strategic, if not existential, threat to this country. In the meantime, Israel is waiting to see what impact the turmoil surrounding the U.S. pullout from Afghanistan will have on the Biden administration's willingness to take a strong stand against Iran. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Coming up, a refugee hotspot exploding. We'll find out who is behind the invasion of thousands of migrants into Lithuania. We've got the story for you. Stay with us. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. 
Welcome back. Here are some of the other headlines we are following for you right now in the CBN newsroom. Israel's military bombed several Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip Sunday. This all comes in response to the rioting on the border that critically wounded an Israeli police officer. At least 24 Palestinians have been wounded. Reverend Jesse Jackson and his wife Jacqueline are hospitalized due to complications of COVID-19. The Rainbow Push Coalition president says doctors are monitoring their condition and offer no further updates at this time. An Oklahoma mother of 11 rescued 10 members of Afghanistan's all-girls robotic team. She flew to Qatar to Qatar earlier in the month in an attempt to get the girls to safety before the chaos in Te before the chaos with the Taliban. You can get more of these stories by visiting our website at cbnnews.com. The new hot spot for refugees is smack in the middle of Europe. Thousands of illegals from Africa and the Middle East are invading the tiny country of Lithuania. Why? Because the man known as Europe's last dictator is weaponizing the migrants. Chuck Holton traveled to Lithuania to bring us this firsthand look at the struggle to hold back the horde. Tempers flare in this small Lithuanian village as locals protest the building of a new refugee camp. It will soon house hundreds from Iraq, Syria, and Africa, and these Lithuanians fear the better life migrants seek will come at the expense of their own. The migrants won't let us live in peace. They've decided to invade this small village. There will be more immigrants here than locals. We have small children. Who will guarantee they are safe? The government here has little choice but to keep building camps, as record numbers of migrants make this tiny country the newest refugee hotspot in an ongoing crisis that has plagued the European Union since 2015. Lithuanian officials say Belarus is weaponizing migrants against them. This would be a great place to go camping if it wasn't for all the mosquitoes. I'm on the border between Lithuania on this side and Belarus. That's that post back there. In fact, there are a lot of people camping right back in those woods behind me, and they're preparing to cross illegally into the European Union. Uh, many of them are unaccompanied minors, or at least they say they are. When we went and spoke with the head of the migrant center on the Lithuanian side today, she told us some of those unaccompanied minors are actually not. I can see the people and I can guess they are strongly built and uh, they, they don't seem to be minors. So they pretend to be 16 or 17, but I think they are maybe 25, 28. Conflict has been brewing with Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko after allegations recent elections were rigged. Known as Europe's last dictator, Lukashenko has threatened to flood the EU with migrants and worse. We thought ourselves immune and uh, until a few months ago when uh, the Russian dictator decided that he would use migration flows as a means to punish Lithuania for its uh, principal stance that we did not recognize the, the, the stolen election. And so if his uh, border guards suddenly started just propelling people. And, and then uh, explicitly uh, Lukashenko said that he was going to flood EU and the countries which oppose his regime with migrants, drugs and recently said also radioactive materials. And the migrants also admit the Belarusian government is behind the push. One month ago, the Lukashenko, this uh, open uh, visa from Iraq person. I don't know, maybe they need more people come in Minsk, and I think they have problems with Lithuania. That's why they open visa for us. This refugee center hosts migrants from all over the world, as far away as Venezuela. But most of the migrants come from the Middle East, especially Iraq and Kurdistan. However, almost none of them actually qualify for asylum. So I don't know how long time I stay here. We are not animal. We are human, brother. We are human. It's no matter the Lukashenko, they have problem. He's, not, he's okay, he's not okay. I don't care for Lukashenko. I don't care for the border. I care about me and about these people. And the weaponization of migrants isn't helping. These Iraqis won't be allowed to continue into the EU because Lithuania knows each one that succeeds means many more will come. Meanwhile, the government is scrambling to stop others from crossing. 
So uh, we've trying to increase the uh, physical presence of, uh, of our officers at the border, as well as some physical barriers that we are imposing in the uh, sectors where we think that the, the, the pressure likely to be highest. I and my government intend to do whatever it takes to absolutely ensure that only people who are persecuted for political reasons stay here, and we are a friendly country to this end. In Vilnius, Lithuania, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. And still ahead here on CBN News Watch, a subscription platform that shares explicit content is now changing course after children have become involved. We'll talk to Faith Wire's Trago and Phillips for more on this story. So coming up next, stay with us. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my mom stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. Turning now to social media news, a content sharing platform will soon ban its users from sharing explicit content. The subscription platform is called Fans Only, and its ban begins this fall. This move come comes after a BBC report revealed children are accessing the platform. Trey Owens Phillips covered this story for faithwire.com and joins us now with more. So Trey, what exactly did the BBC find when it comes to children and OnlyFans? So early this year, the BBC released a report finding that children as young as 13 years old were not only accessing explicit content, Ephraim, but they were actually uh, able to post it as well. Uh, 16, 17 year olds were posting sexually explicit content and making money off the platform, which of course is illegal. Wow. So what's been the response from users who've been profiting by sharing explicit content on this platform? So we've read some other uh, from, from some other outlets who have covered this and then have talked to people who are in the uh, adult industry and a lot of them have said that this is an attack on on the sex work industry. But many of them, it seems at least so far, have have pretty much dismissed these legitimate concerns. I mean, even at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children uh, has seen dozens of cases of missing children showing up on this platform this year alone. Very scary. This, of course, marks a big change for the platform. What do you think uh, will happen with the brand now, especially since explicit content and subscriptions is how they're making money? Yeah, so that's their bread and butter. It's, it, we should know that they're not limiting, they're not eliminating nudity. They're just eliminating sexually explicit conduct. It's not clear exactly what that's going to look like, but it certainly is going to shake up how they make money because they've OnlyFans is pretty much known exclusively for explicit content. So I think that's yet to be determined what it's going to look like. They want to rebrand as just a regular social media app, but I'm not certain what that's going to look like.
All right, thank you so much for more of Trey's reporting and stories like this. Be sure to check out Faithwire on the CBN News Channel tonight at 8.30 Eastern. You can find it also on the CBN News app. We'll be right back. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm gonna teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. It's about the competition. I kind of put that pressure on myself, and I think people had expectations. It's about overcoming. We use this phrase all the time, keep chopping, keep practicing hard. It's about going the distance. You know, I think as a father, it's my job, you know, to lead. Just be the best husband and father I can be. Watch Going the Distance with Sean Brown Saturday night at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? It's going to be King Simba's finest fling. Rehearsals began for the Broadway cast of Disney's The Lion King with director Julie Taymor recently addressing the cast at a table read. Broadway, as you know, has been dark since March of 2020 due to the pandemic. Shows are now set to reopen September 14th. Toys R Us is getting another lease on life, teaming up with Macy's. The company will open toy shops in more than 400 department stores starting in 2022. Already, customers can shop for Toys R Us products at Macy's.com. The Toys R Us brand has been around for more than 70 years. Even Jeffrey the Giraffe will be on hand to welcome shoppers at many of those stores inside Macy's. Time now for your Monday motivation. Here's a thought to Take with you today, especially in difficult time. No one enjoys the pain of being broken or bleeding, but guess what? There's a blessing in being broken. Trust God in the process. He is there and probably a whole lot closer than you think. Hold fast to his promise and trust the process. That will do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Of course, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel or online at CBNNews.com. You can find them there at any time. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at CBN.com. And we're available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and would love to hear from you. Make this a marvelous Monday. Be sure to have yourself a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing you right back here, same time tomorrow.